Hi everyone. Welcome to today's topic Farmer's Numbers and Farmer's Primes. Farmer, who was a French lawyer and a mathematician, thought he had a formula for finding all the primes. His formula Fn is 2 to the power 2 to the power n plus 1. But that was not true. Numbers of the type which we denote by Fn 2 to the power 2 to the power n plus 1 are named after him and they are called the Fermer's numbers. If these numbers are prime, they are known as Fermer's prime. Now you can check if you take n to be 0, we get F0 as 3. If we take n to be 1, we get F1 as 5. If if we take n to be 2, we get f2 as 17. If n is 3, we get f3 as 257. And if n is equal to 4, f4 is 2 to the power 2 to the power 4 plus 1, which is 65537. Fermer conjectured that all Fermer numbers are prime, but in 1734, Euler showed that f5 is a composite number. It has two factors, 641 and 6700417. Fermer's numbers came into limelight 200 years after him when Gauss solved the Greek problem. Gauss proved that a regular polygon of n sides can be constructed with a ruler and a compass if and only if n can be factorized as n is equal to 2 to the power k p1 into p2 into dash 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 pr where k is a not negative integer and p1 comma p2 dash 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 pr are all Fermer's primes. Now this revived the interest in Fermer's primes. Let's look at some recurrence relations. We can always generate our Fermer numbers using them. Look at the first one. For n greater than or equal to 1, fn is nothing but f of n minus 1, minus 1 whole square plus 1. Now, let's take n to be 3. And you have already seen f0 was 3, f1 you found was 5, f2 was nothing but 17, f3 was 257. We'll just stop here. Let's take n to be 3. Now, which means that we want to find f3. And as you know, in the formula, when I put n is equal to 3, we would be getting f of 2 minus 1 whole square plus 1. Substitute the values from here. You will see f2 was nothing but 17. So it's 17 minus 1 whole square plus 1. You simplify, you'll get 257, which is nothing but a f3. So using the previous values, we can always find the next one. Come to the second relation. Here, fn is nothing but f0 into f1 dash 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 into f of n minus 1 plus 2. Again, if I take n to be 3 because for explanation, smaller numbers are better, we will be finding f of 3. Now, f3 would be nothing but f0, f1. How far will we go? Up to f3 minus 1, which is f. 2. So, this is then added to 2. Now, substitute the values. You see your f0 is 3, f1 is 5, f2 is 17 plus 2. You will get 257 which is a f3. Let's look at the next relation. It is for n greater than or equal to 2, fn is f of n minus 1 plus 2 to the power 2 to the power n minus 1 f0 into f1 dash 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 into f of n minus 2. Again, if you take n to be 3, our f3 value will be found by finding f of 3 minus 1 which is f2 plus 2 to the power 2 to the power 3 minus 1 which is 2 into f0 into f1. Why? Because we have n is equal to 3. So, we go up to f1. Now you substitute the values, you will get f2 you know is nothing but 17 plus 2 to the power 2 to the power 2 you know is nothing but 16. f0 is 3 and f1 is 5. Simplify, this will give us 257 which is our f3. Now look at the last one. Again if I take n to be 3, our f3 can be found using the previous value 
values f of 2 whole square minus 2 times f1 minus 1 whole square. Substitute f2 you know is 17 square minus 2 times f1 we know is 5 minus 1 whole square. Simplify 289 minus 2 into 4 square you will get 257. Now let's look at some facts. The first one except f0 and f1 last digits of all the Fermat numbers is 7. Second any two distinct Fermat numbers are always relatively prime. Euler proved every prime factor of Fn must be of the form constant k times 2 to the power n plus 1 plus 1. It was later improved by Lucas and for n greater than or equal to 2 he said that Every prime factor must be of the form k times 2 to the power n plus 2 plus 1. Fourth one, the sum of reciprocals of all the Fermat numbers is always irrational. No Fermat prime can be expressed as the difference of two odd prime powers. This was the fifth point. Sixth, Fn is composite for all values of n lying between 5 to 32, including 5 and 32. Factorization of Fermat numbers is only known for n is greater than or equal to 0 to less than or equal to 11. For n is equal to 20 and n is equal to 24, it has already been checked. There are no prime factors. Eighth point, the largest known Fermat number which is composite is f. 1833954. It has a prime factor 7 into 2 to the power 1823956 plus 1. Ninth point. A firmer number cannot be a perfect number. Tenth. If P is a firmer prime, then 2 to the power P minus 1 will never be congruent to 1 mod P square. 11 point. Only finite Fermat numbers are prime. 12. Pepin's primality test for Fermat's prime is given as follows. For n greater than 0, Fn is a prime if and only if 3 to the power Fn minus 1 upon 2 is congruent to minus 1 mod of Fn. Now this primality testing is done to check whether a Fermat number is a Fermat prime or not. As by squaring both the sides repeatedly, we can check the congruence holds or not. And then say whether my firmer number is a firmer prime or not. Thank you for watching. The next video will be on Mersenne numbers and primes. For detailed notes and practice problems, you can watch my website www.profprithivashvi.com.